Christmas Eve on Lonesome by John Fox, Jr. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda McDaniel. Christmas Eve on Lonesome by John Fox, Jr. It was Christmas Eve on Lonesome, but nobody on Lonesome knew it was Christmas Eve, although a child of the outer world could have guessed it. Even out in those wilds where Lonesome slipped from one lone log cabin high up in the steeps, down through a stretch of jungle darkness, to another lone cabin at the mouth of the stream. There was the holy hush in the gray twilight that comes only on Christmas Eve. There were the big flakes of snow that fell as they never fall except on Christmas Eve. There was a snowy man on horseback in a big coat, and with saddle pockets that might have been bursting with toys for children in the little cabin at the head of the stream. But not even he knew it was Christmas Eve. He was thinking of Christmas Eve, but it was of the Christmas Eve of the year before, when he sat in prison with a hundred other men in stripes, and listened to the chaplain talk of peace and goodwill to all men upon earth, when he had forgotten all men upon earth but one, and had only hatred in his heart for him. "'Vengeance is mine,' saith the Lord." That was what the chaplain had thundered at him, and then, as now, he thought of the enemy who had betrayed him to the law, and had sworn away his liberty, and had robbed him of everything in life except a fierce longing for the day when he could strike back and strike to kill. And then, while he looked back hard into the chaplain's eyes, and now, while he splashed through the yellow mud thinking of that Christmas Eve, Buck shook his head and then as now his sullen heart answered mine the big flakes drifted to crutch and twig and limb they gathered on the brim of buck's slouch hat filled out the wrinkles of his big coat whitened his hair and his long mustache and sifted into the yellow twisting path that guided his horse's feet high above he could see through the whirling snow now and then the gleam of a red star he knew it was the light from his enemy's window, but somehow the chaplain's voice kept ringing in his ears, and every time he saw the light he couldn't help thinking of the story of the star that the chaplain had told that Christmas Eve. And he dropped his eyes by and by so as not to see it again, and rode on until the light shone in his face. Then he led his horse up a little ravine and hitched it among the snowy holly and rhododendrons and slipped toward the light. There was a dog somewhere, of course, and like a thief he climbed over the low rail fence and stole through the tall snow-wet grass until he leaned against an apple tree with the sill of the window two feet above the level of his eyes. Reaching above him he caught a stout limb and dragged himself up to a crotch of the tree. A mass of snow slipped softly to the earth. The branch creaked above the light wind, around the corner of the house a dog growled, and he sat still. He had waited three long years, and he had ridden two hard nights and lain out two cold days in the woods for this. And presently he reached out very carefully and noiselessly broke leaf and branch and twig until a passage was cleared for his eye and for the point of the pistol that was gripped in his right hand. A woman was just disappearing through the kitchen door, and he peered cautiously and saw nothing but darting shadows. From one corner a shadow loomed suddenly out in human shape. Buck saw the shadow gesture of an arm, and he cocked his pistol. That shadow was his man, and in a moment he would be in a chair in the chimney corner to smoke his pipe, maybe, his last pipe. Buck's smile, pure hatred, made him smile. But it was mean, a mean and sorry thing to shoot this man in the back, dog though he was, and now that the moment had come, a wave of sickening shame ran through Buck. No one of his name had ever done that before, but this man and his people had, and with their own lips they had framed palliation for him. What was fair for one was fair for the other, they always said. A poor man couldn't fight money in the courts, and so they had shot from the brush, and that was why they were rich now and Buck was poor why his enemy was safe at home, and he was out here homeless in the apple tree. Buck thought of all this, but it was no use. The shadow slouched suddenly and disappeared, and Buck was glad. 
with a gritting oath between his chattering teeth he pulled his pistol in and thrust one leg down to swing from the tree he would meet him face to face next day and kill him like a man and there he hung as rigid as though the cold had suddenly turned him blood bones and marrow into ice the door had opened and full in the firelight stood the girl he had heard was dead he knew now how and why that word was sent him and now she who had been his sweetheart stood before him the wife of the man he meant to kill her lips moved he thought he could tell what she said get up jim get up then she went back a flame flared up within him now that must have come straight from the devil's forge again the shadows played over the ceiling his teeth grated as he cocked his pistol and pointed it down the beam of light that shot into the heart of the apple tree and waited the shadow of a head shot along the rafters and over the fireplace it was a madman clutching the butt of the pistol now and as his eye caught the glinting sight and his heart thumped there stepped into the square light of the window a child it was a boy with yellow tumbled hair and he had a puppy in his arms in front of the fire the little fellow dropped the dog and they began to play yap 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 buck could hear the shrill barking of the fat little dog and the joyous shrieks of the child as he made his playfellow chase his tail around and around or tumbled him head over heels on the floor it was the first child buck had seen for three years it was his child and hers and in the apple tree buck watched fixedly they were down on the floor now rolling over and over together and he watched them until the child grew tired and turned his face to the fire and lay still looking into it but could see his eyes close presently and then the puppy crept closer put his head on his playmate's chest and the two lay thus asleep and still buck looked his clasp loosening on his pistol and his lips loosening under his stiff moustache and kept looking until the door opened again and the woman crossed the floor a flood of light flashed suddenly on the snow barely touching the snow hung tips of the apple tree and he saw her in the doorway saw her look anxiously into the darkness look and listen a long while buck dropped noiselessly to the snow when she closed the door he wondered what they would think when they saw his tracks in the snow next morning and then he realized they would be covered before morning as he started up the ravine where his horse was he heard the clink of metal down the road and the splash of a horse's hoofs in the soft mud and he sank down behind a holly bush again the light from the cabin flashed out on the snow that you jim yep and then the child's voice as u dat thump dandy yep the cheery answer rang out almost at buck's ear and jim passed death waiting for him behind the bush which his left foot brushed shaking the snow from the red berries down on the crouching figure beneath once only far down the dark jungled way with the underlying streak of yellow that was leading him whither god only knew once only buck looked back there was the red light gleaming faintly through the moonlit flakes of snow once more he thought of the star and once more the chaplain's voice came back to him mine saith the lord just how buck could not see with himself in the snow and him back there for life with her and the child but some strange impulse made him bare his head yorn said buck grimly but nobody on lonesome not even buck knew that it was christmas eve End of Christmas Eve on Lonesome by John Fox, Jr. Recording by Linda McDaniel, Atlanta, Georgia, November 2008.